Judges chapter 15, I read from verse 14 to 20. The choir just led us a song that I believe tied with one of my contemplations last night. Every growing Christian has a sense of restlessness. A bit of it because it's healthy for growth. Immediately you settle too fast. Anything is possible. Actually, how much of things have you seen? If anything is possible, and you have settled into rest because you have been able to buy a wristwatch, then you are cut short yourself. Anything is possible. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. That is Samson. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the robes that were on his hands became like flax that is born with fire. And his bones broke loose from his band, from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand to, and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I've slain a thousand men. So it was when he had finished speaking that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called the place Ramat Lehi. Then he became very thirsty. So he cried out to the Lord and said, you have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant shall i now die of thirst and fall into the end of the uncircumcised if you gave me victory over a thousand philistines i should not fall to thirst of water it's amazing how little things can destroy great things if you put Test on one side and a thousand Philistines on the other side. The natural inclination in us will fear a thousand Philistines. But this man was about to succumb to test even after winning a thousand Philistines. Sometimes when we cry, God, give me the anointing, give me the power. As important as those things are, laziness as a little vice can destroy them. It looks so small, but it can weigh more and even those things can i will i kill a thousand philistines and die of thirst so god split the whole place that is in lehi and water came out and he drank and his spirit revived and he called his name and hakor which is in lehi to this day and hakor means the well of him that cried there's a point in your life where you must cry out because things I'm bigger than this. I can't succumb to test. I have seen great deliverance. How many of us have seen great deliverance? We have won greater battles. We can't lose smaller battles. Are you following me? And the answer to it is a cry. I want to give you one minute of cry this morning. Lord, all things are possible. Maybe some of us are already getting constrained inside and living a life of rest there are some of us are not troubled about many things anymore at least we have a church where the word of god is taught us we have a pastor and a husband that loves us we have this and we have that and we have some money and we take some salary when many a times there is still much more that is possible who is going to cry with me to the Lord this morning? I'll give you one minute, just cry out. That the Lord expand what he can do with you. Lord, I refuse to stop here. That's my cry. I refuse to stop here. I refuse to be trapped here. I thank
thank you for what I have seen, but I refuse. Little foxes to destroy my vine. I refuse it. I refuse the enemy to make my ointment destroyed by a little folly. Give me power every hour to be true. Raise a new hunger inside of me. Raise a new hunger inside of me. Raise a new hunger inside of me. I surrender. I want to know you more. Oh Lord, you are my God. I will never praise you, oh Lord, oh Lord, you are my God, and I will ever, and I will ever praise you, oh Lord, oh Lord, you are my God, I will ever. we long and thirst for you this morning may we find the grace to be able to believe that your wisdom is higher than ours that you know what we don't know and that we can lean and trust on your report whose report shall we believe we'll believe the report of the Lord let your report be clear here this morning. Let your people have the capacity to believe. Let it be mixed in faith in our hearts. That we might find rest in you. Thank you forevermore. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning church. Please celebrate this choir. Amen. All right. Um, let's quickly go into the word this morning. Luke chapter 7 where we read. I'll just go to verse 8. This morning we are looking at dying is the kingdom. Luke 7 verse 8. The centurion was speaking to Jesus. In the message is sent to Jesus by his friends. He said, I'm a man placed under authority, having soldiers. Questions, are soldiers robots? Oh, God, answer me, are they? They are who? They are men too. 
And I say to one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, who is a man too, do this. And he does it. What makes this centurion have more right and authority to speak to human beings like him what they should do? What do you think will qualify? His position? What else could qualify? Hmm? His experience? Batu? Do you think it odd that a man like you that has the same brain, gray matter that you have can tell you, no matter how you think, sit down there. We see it every day and we don't count it wrong. If you enter your workplace, the bosses you meet there, sometimes you feel like they are taking decisions that are not right. But they tell you this is the way it should be done. What do you do? But when God talks, when pastor talks, how do you do? He said, pastor, maybe that's the way. Is there not a possibility that go and they go? Is the way the centurion sees it. Is there a possibility that some of the servants, when he said go, feels like they should come? But they went. Because there is something in him called invested authority. That's how God's kingdom works. Many times we miss the point. And the reason is, for example, in that story, the Bible says certain Jews went to Jesus, a centurion sent Jews to Jesus and said, please tell him to come and heal my servant. And the Jews began to speak, to persuade Jesus. They begged him earnestly that the person they are speaking about is deserving. And that what verse 5 said, he loves our nation and he has built us a synagogue. They built their argument on three premises. One, he's deserving as a person. Number two, he loves our nation. And number three, he's built us a synagogue. By the time Jesus was coming close to the man's house, the man said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. In fact, that's the reason why I did not come to you. So it means the Jews missed the point all bit. The reason why the man didn't go to Jesus. They thought the man was speaking that Jesus should come because he perceived he was deserving. The reason why the man actually did not even speak to Jesus directly is because he perceived he was not worthy. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> so the man felt when Jesus was said, for I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Verse Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy. Where did the Jews get the idea? You know how you can summarize and conclude on a person and you don't even know what the person is saying. The person is saying, you go and tell Jesus to come. You, the reason is, you know, he's deserving. He's worthy. He built a synagogue. The man was operating from a frequency that was totally alien to what the Jews were thinking about. And there was something again in him that Jesus saw that was totally alien to Israel. He said, Jesus, speak the word. I too am a man under authority. I speak to one, go and he goes, to one, come and he comes, to one, do this and does it. Speak the word, you're my servant. Jesus said, I have not seen this type of faith in Israel. That is this man you are even... Pushing me to help is the one you should be learning from. We have a whole tendency of missing the points because we have assumptions. And you know what? Assumption is what? Is the lowest form of knowledge. And the reason why we have centralized knowledge or centralized authority many at times and people are not left to do things the way they wish to do it is because many at times they have assumptions and they build on assumptions and assumptions are not always accurate because they don't always have all the information. The Jews didn't have the information why the man didn't come. They made conclusions on why the man didn't come. Are you following me? 
and there was something in the man they even thought they were helping that they did not have this is why god has not left you to pilot your own life the way you think best because there are too many things you don't know you know one challenging reality about us is that we think we know how many of you know where you ought to be by now why picking here? I know where where should you be by now? She have been done with school NYC, taking some money. I've seen people that left school seven years and they didn't make one year. Even school is not automatic qualification for making money. <laughs> you can be in school and be making money, and leave school and not make. <laughs> it's life. Too much of assumptions. There is one thing God is building today that God will never leave to human assumptions. It's his kingdom. Are you ready? Uh, you won't like it because you don't like somebody to tell you do this. You want to always what? You know, put your own input. Can I submit to you tonight, this morning, God needs no impute for you, for his kingdom. You know what God needs from you? Obedience. Go. Go. Not like God. God is not very easy to serve. One of the things I've been telling you recently that you people don't have, I discovered I've been saying it. I will show you today that God does not have counselor. And God does not have anybody that reviews his action. How many of you can work with somebody that nobody can talk to? Nobody can review his action. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll be afraid to work with such a person. But God is like such a person. How many of you can cancel God out to, to organize this world? So that 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 Earthquake you are loud in Turkey. I know a place that would have been more fitting. We should have just allowed half of it to appear somewhere. I won't mention the place, but you all you all have ideas. Unfortunately, God has no counsel. He says, Go. And occasionally your mind is filled with why that word go is not the right word. Or it's not the right action. But he has the invested authority. Are you following me? Thine is the kingdom. Daniel chapter 2, from verse 31 to 45. He said, Daniel was talking to the king. He said, King, the vision you saw on your bed is that you saw a great image. The head of the image was gold, the chest was silver. And after silver was bronze, and the legs were iron, and the toes were iron mixed with clay. And he said, you, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, you are that head of gold. And after you will come, another kingdom that will be inferior to you is that silver. And he began to speak it. He said, but you see, something is going to happen. He said, you know, in that your vision, you saw a stone. Caught without hands. Images are shaped to look like man by man's hands. They are not natural. But this stone is without human hands. Inasmuch as you saw the stone was caught out of the mountain without hands and it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what will come to pass. And the, interp the dream is certain and his interpretation is sure. Now, before that time, he said something. Go to verse, give me verse 40. Let's read from verse 40. I can. The fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. Like iron that crushes, the kingdom will break in pieces and crush the others. Whereas you saw the feet and the toes partly of 
potter's clay and partly of iron the kingdom shall be divided yet the strength of his iron shall be in it just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay so that the kingdom be partly strong and partly fragile as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay in the days of this kingdom of these kings the god of heaven we set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom will not be left to other people. God will protect this kingdom by himself. Let me look at the KJV. Give me the KJV of that verse. In the days of this king, kings, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never destroy the kingdom shall not be left to other people. God will not get to a point and say, do with the kingdom as you will. The kingdom of God is protected solely by God and run only by God's will. That's why it will never be destroyed. Are you following me, church? God is doing something on the face of the earth. You are only an observer and a participator. You are not an initiator. It's caught without human hands. Are you following me? Anybody that will walk with God will learn humility. Because this is not a place human beings want to be. God, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. I want you to understand that God works all things according to the counsel of his own will. The Bible says, in him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of Yinka. How does God work? God counsels himself. Let us make man after our own who told him that the best way man can be is to look like him? He's the one that told himself. God works all things after the counsel of his own, of his will. He, he, he will take the counsel, he will set it at his will, then he will work it out. Where do you come in? Where do I come in? Hmm? You don't understand. Give me Romans eleven thirty six. I will show you some things today. Romans eleven thirty six. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Of him, talk to me. Through him, to him. To whose glory? Mm. So every time you are running around, God's agenda is of God, is true God, is to God, and is to his glory. Bolutua. Do you hear what I'm saying? You are here this morning of him, through him, to him, and to his glory. That's why you did not preserve yourself to be here. He's working on things according to the counsel of his own will. You don't like this place because in Colossians 1, 16, every time you hear kingdom, one of the things that comes close to kingdom is will. God has a will and it's an unbending will. It's of him and to him and through him. That's what Pastor Jube said during the, anniversary, during the pure language. That God's power goes in the line of God's purpose. You can't see God's power working in your life when you are outside of God's purpose. God works all things of him through, through is his power. That is, he activates it, he brings it to pass. And he comes back to him again. He uses his power for his own plan. 
doesn't use his power for your good. Selfish interest. Say, God, I want you to call down fire and kill all the Samaritans. You don't even know the kind. God does not have it. You can't force God to turn stones to bread to prove you, to meet your appetite. It's of him. At that point, it was more important for man to know that man shall not live by bread alone. That was what was gone in divine agenda, and that's what God's power was about. If you try to walk outside of that time and bring stones to bread, you will do, you will do magic. Because what heaven was speaking at that time is man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. If I have to suspend bread to make, give you attention to know that my word is your life, I will do it. And it's not lack. It's not insufficiency. It's focus. You don't get what I'm saying. It was not because God could not bring bread. It was not the same Jesus who multiplied five loaves and two fishes and fed 5,000. That was not the problem. The problem was that the focus of God at that point is that you must know that my word is the governing power of everything I do. Look at Colossians 1.16. For by him are all things. For by him all things were created in heaven. That are not. Visible, invisible. Thrones or dominion. Or principalities and powers. All things were created through him. And by the time I'm through with you this morning, you just say, God, what do you want me to do? That sense, I've come this morning to destroy yourself for your sense of self-importance. Because it's your hindrance to your purpose of him, through him, to him, of him, through him, That's the truth. That's the way God has ordained everything. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 16, if we can read through. First Corinthians 2. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it's written, I has not seen nor hear heard, now, as he entered the heart of man, the things with God are prepared for those who love him. For God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Continue. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we speak not in words which human wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual with spiritual. Next verse is important. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is judged by no one. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may... Please, who knows exactly what God should do next in his life? You have... You know where we started from? This was what the lords of the, the rulers of this world did not know. If they have known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. When they crucified the Lord of glory, what did they discover? They discovered that they were not advancing their own cause. They were even doing a detriment to their own cause. So it now came after all those things. Now said, so who has known the mind of the Lord? That you may... How many of you can instruct God? How many of you think you know what God should do? There are some countries I think God should collapse. Just gather and put them and attach them to some other places. I particularly occasionally get troubled why I'm using a green passport in the will of God.
There's nothing you can do about it. How many of you know God knows? You believe. But if you are given chance to talk to God, do you know what you can say to him? Shimule Sorosa. But we have the mind of Christ. But listen to this. In Matthew 6, from verse 9 to 13, he said, In this way pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And immediately he called for the kingdom. What was the next thing he asked for? Thy will. You don't talk about kingdom and now settle into self-will. Because the kingdom will not be left to other people. Are you following me? The kingdom is governed by what? By God's will. Ah. It was King Louis of France, King Louis the Fifteenth of France, who said, I am the state. That's what is called absolute monarchy. There is only one being in the world who has absolute power and is not corrupted. But there's no other person. Even we, when we give power to people, we create checks and some of you even are trying to create checks and balances on God. You know, sometimes the reason why we don't have motivation to obey is because we want to create check in case God did not see. One day God told Abraham, I'm about to go to Sodom and Abraham said, God, with the God of the old heart, not do what is right. I know you have right to be angry with Sodom, but in case there are 50 people there. Because to Abraham at that point, maybe God was operating in rash judgment. How many of you have felt God operating in rash judgment? How will he allow that? We call on You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because since you have become God's counselor now. I will welcome you to the throne room. He says, sit. God, sit down there. Uh, what I was thinking is that you should not have given us two eyes. Because uh, you should have given us the type of eyes that have an x-ray. How many of you feel life would have been simpler if you could see what people are thinking? No, no. Will life not be simpler? Or more complex? Because you yourself know what you think. <laughs> you yourself know that as I'm thinking, as I'm preaching, that some of you are not here. So thank God, God did not allow me to see your heart. Come, my big my, my do microphone lead. <laughs> this, this is this I'm wasting my time for. You understand? God knows. I want you to know that whatsoever God does is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope you can agree with that. So that the day it tells you, sit there. You will not feel like, but God, if I can, just give me one chance. And the minute you break out of that, you might break out of his kingdom. Because his kingdom is guarded by his will. I pray that you understand my burden this morning. Hebrews 2, 3, and 4. Hebrews 2, 3, and 4 said, was speaking about the manifestation of the Spirit. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who had him. Verse 4 said, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Spirit, according to his own will, even the manifestation of the Spirit is undergathered by the will of God. That's why sometimes we go to a place and say, God, like Paul will say, fellow shield, rule, rule, tenia. It will just be still flowing waters. That was a pray for them. Are you following? And some other days you want to rest and say, I don't want any wahala. Then the spirit goes into a boisterous manifestation because it's underguarded by the will of God, not the will of the prophet or the servant of God. 
God does not play with his will because that's what undergirds and keeps his kingdom. You can't think kingdom and underestimate the will of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is the challenge. How many of you love God's will? The will of God. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured the heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. All the things you see on earth, you call them abundant, immeasurable. God called them measured. The sea is measured. If the sea is not measured, it would have to overtake in the earth. You didn't get what I'm saying? The sea is measured. That's why the Pacific Ocean is deeper than the Atlantic Ocean. That's why you don't have cyclones here. All of the moral and water man in me. If we are having typhoon and tornado and cyclone, Nigeria would have ceased to exist. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Everything is here. He will thank God for he knows what he's doing. He measured the water, in the, he measured the dust. He weighed the mountain in scales and the hills in a balance. <laughs> Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Who, or as a counselor, has taught him? Space one. We have enough space for mountains here, but we don't have. Those places, they don't have space. There's mountain to mountain. Hills to hills. With whom did he take cancer? I want to ask you a question. When last did you come out where? Not taking cancer. <laughs> you. You blocked that from everybody. And you didn't regret the decision. It's not in your capacity. The reason why the servant, when the centurion will say to the servant, go and he goes, is because the centurion, the servant believes there is something in the training of the centurion I don't have. So occasionally when he says go, and I don't even understand the reason why I have to go, I believe that he knows something I don't know. Now that is the fallible man. How much more God? If God says go, some of you God will say, don't fight that man, you'll be fighting. Hey, Mokoto Shisim. Who created feeling? That feeling you are reacting to. Eh? When a man dies, his emotions die. His anger, his hatred, his love, everything. All those things are manifestations packaged in you as a living being. Are you following me? So when you are reacting to pain and anger, and God says, don't react. You say, God, kuyeni? She kuyeni? How many of you have told God before, you don't understand this pressure, this, ah, God. It was like the world was crashing. How many of you have felt the world was crashing, but you woke up the next morning and there was fresh breeze? With whom did he take us? Who was instructed? Who taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? Who showed him the way of understanding? Continue. Behold, the nations are a drop in a bucket and are counted as small dust on the scale. Look, it lifts up the eyes as a very little thing. Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. You know Lebanon? That's the cedar of Lebanon. That's where the thickest and biggest trees are. So God said they are not sufficient. They are not enough for my firewood. Nor the beast sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are nothing. They are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God? If we can have belief in a fallible man to tell us sit, and we sit. President Vladimir Putin sent young men in Russia to Ukraine. Some of them don't know why they are fighting. 
and some of them have died. But the power of the state is invested in that man. That thing they call commander in chief. They will not have bad commander in chiefs in Nigeria. The commander in chief is not vice president. Though. Only one person is invested with that sovereign authority to declare war. The only person that can lead Nigeria to war is the president of Nigeria. All those your immigration controller. Yeah. They play. <laughs> Yet we know some of them are not worthy to be called excellency. A coffee, a full of bush, or you know, let, let the place not be empty. One man, I don't know his name, Lord the entire border for us to go rice. We obey. Rice became gold. At the end of one year of opening border, rice was everywhere. Hmm? Did you remove him? He came another day, he said, okay, it's Nino. It's Nino, if you don't register Nino, you're in trouble. You all are running around, Nino, Nino, Nino. Where's your Nino number? It's one known number somewhere. The final one is change of currency. <laughs> they just took the 1,000, dipped it inside blue color. We don't even understand the wisdom in what they are doing. At the, at the end, after suffering, suffering, we are back to spending our normal. Yet you obey them. We have earthly parents who chastise us for their own good and we obey them. How much more God, our Heavenly Father. And you come out here and I'm preaching every Sunday to you and you are still thinking about whether to do what I'm telling is that what Pastor is saying is true. Momo saying review it. When they condemn your 1,000 errors that you stored at home, and you could not review it, the reason I will show you why God does not leave His kingdom to men. I told you there's we have no impute in His kingdom. Nor do we even have a right of review. When he has acted, Ecclesiastes 8.4, wherever the word of a king is, there is power. Who can say to him? When he has done what is doing, what do we say? You are the Lord. Sometimes when we are even saying that song, it's a protest. How many of you have sang that song? There's one that people used to say. A protest song. Uh, I forgot it's a Yoruba one. Like they are just telling you, hey, shall alone. I, 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 in, 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 in. There are some that are lady with protest. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in Romans 49, 14 to 22, he said, Wait, what if I have I've, like I told Pharaoh that I've raised him for my power to show my power he said he now said something in that place he said then you will now say that who has resisted his will who has resisted his will he said I will have mercy on who I have mercy I will add him who I want to add him. he said so who has resisted his will that's human protest gathering up have you ever had a protest on this sovereign power of God before? This way that God has absolute right over everything. Because you are a logical being. You will say to me then, who, why does he find fault? Hmm? Who created us with these frailties? Talk to me. Yeah. Why does he find fault? Why? 
who has resisted his will is there you know how powerful god's will is is it possible for a human being to even resist god's will when pharaoh was saying yes uh, i will not let the people go god said god told moses i showed you during rod of god from the beginning that pharaoh will not let you go so that i can multiply my power so the thing is that <laughs> is it pharaoh or god who is at work huh? Eh? you don't have the answer <laughs> So why does he fire? What has existed this week? Look at what he then says. Look at what he says again. Verse 20. For indeed, who are you to reply? When he was determining, we couldn't talk. When we saw our put, if we talk too much, we can't reply. With the team form, say to him, who from the why have you made me like this? That's what absolute power in the hand of a loveless being tyranny because you can't counsel him and that can you review his actions if you don't know that god has the best knowledge and knows what you don't know and has your best interest in your heart you will not be able to sit down when he tells you sit or something will tell you maybe i'm missing out on something do you get my God? Huh? Let me rush. God has absolute power. Psalm 62, verse 11 and 12 said, Psalm 62, verse 11 and 12. God has spoken once, twice have I heard. Power belongs to who? <coughs> to God. Power belongs to God. Psalm 65, verse 2 says, You who answers prayer, to you, all flesh, somebody say all flesh, kings, poor, rulers, everybody's looking up to God. And you have that type of power. How many people are looking at you at the office? You have become somebody else. All flesh. My two week old baby is looking at God. I'm looking at God. Have you ever got into a point in your house? Your child needs something. Say, Jack had your mag bad, right? It's not a bad place, so don't be going to say, ah, okay, me bad, yeah. Why they be? You will tell your child, we are both trusting. It's God's part. So you who answers prayer. Hopefully. One day, Rachel told uh, Jacob, why don't you have a child? He said, Am I God? I don't bad brand me. Thank God for your hero husband, but he too. He's pray, pray. Thank God for your pastor. But he's pray. The only person that has the power for all flesh to come to him is God. <laughs> if they give you just 3,000 people to be looking at you, you will determine who they vote for. And they vote for Lashimbe. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> God gave you everything. You voted his enemy. Not the one you vote. I'm just talking. <laughs> because people now, we have to. On the SS, we go go. I won't tell you stories. One of my friends said, I'm inviting you to the inauguration. I said, don't worry, I will come. Make sure I'm close enough to the state cubicle. That's where I want to go. He said, there's a pre-party, your body long. He said, I'm invited. I said, I will come. He said, because I don't know when the spirit of prophecy will come upon me. Let me be close enough to wear my voice. But don't think that I'm not that unruly. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. I will, I will just jump some things because I want us to go to thought. I think the, the points have been made. Isaiah 33, 22. The Lord is our judge. The Lord is our... The Lord is our... He will save us. Do we concentrate all these type of things in the hand of one man? The judiciary is the last stop of what? So when your counselor misbehaves in the street, on the street, what do you do? 
Go to court. That's what they told us. We went to court. The Lord is the judge. The Lord is the lawgiver. This is democracy. Isn't it? Judge, judiciary, lawgiver, national assembly, king, executive. But in God, everything is in one person. It's like the days of the military. Do you know why we don't want the military to return back to Nigeria? Because they were the judge, they were the lawgiver, and they were the king. Who they will to keep. God has so much power that the Bible says He's able to make one, raise one up, and pull down one. You don't get it. The Bible says He kill it and make a life. If that being is not superior to a man, he's corrupted permanently. God is a man. So it's over. You can't put all these powers in a man. That the judge, they bring your wife to you. Just so they go to court, your kicker is standing at the dog. You will remember some provisions. How many of you know there are always provisions? <laughs> <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 1 to 5 I think I'm beginning I'm getting into the message now See, that was one of the reasons why Israelites had challenged with Moses when Moses was bringing the law who was there Moses we sit morning to evening who was judge Moses said, God said, were they there? Occasionally, they would look at Moses. <laughs> well, boy. <laughs> you see now? You see, do you see that reaction? That reaction is what you play with God to when God talks from his absolute power. Because you are not used to believing somebody can have all wisdom. Look at Deuteronomy 33 verse 1. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, it, And dawned on them from Seir, it shone from Mount Paran, it came with 10,000 of say. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people, all his saints are in your hand. They sit at your feet, everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us, a heritage for the congregation of Jacob. He was king in Jeshurun. He commanded the law. He executed the law. He was king in Jeshurun when the leaders of the people were gathered all the tribes of Israel together. Moses was the closest before Israel became a kingdom to almost be invested with all this leadership. You remember in Exodus 18, he sat from morning till evening to judge the people. He came from the mountain to bring the law. Are you following me? Yes, sir. And he was the one creating their sense of direction. That's why some people can't handle Moses. Because the natural human being in us will come one day and question. Are you following me? You have brain. That's why I asked the question when I began. The centurion and the servant, are they human beings? Does the, cent does the servants have brain? George, you can't come here. This is our girl. Uh, every time I'm in the spirit of God, spirit of God. How many of you know sometimes when you first join a church, when the man of God is prophesying, he said, that's spirit of God. But after that, he said, yeah, I'm going to calm down. The last week, here, Pastor Mumu Kotu Shele. <laughs> How many of you have been there before? I know it was. I was there's some information you are not privileged to. I was privileged to when Pastor was because it, it reflected. Because you know, the absolute power is very hard for man to undo. So Moses was a trouble. Look at, for example, in Numbers 16 1 to 5. Number 16 1 to 5. Korah, the son of Isa, the son of Kohat, the son of Levi, the son of Datan and Abiram, the son of Eliab. On the son of Pellet, sons of Reuben, took men 
And they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered against Moses and said, you take too much upon yourself. For all the congregation is holy. Hmm? You know, one of the reasons why people love Christianity is not because they love Christianity. There's a sense of liberality, Christianity affords. Have you noticed? Even after I finish preaching now, do you know what you will say? say my own understanding. Have you heard before? When you don't want to heed what has been said, you develop what you want to hear. Say, some of you say, when pastor was preaching, I finished my own sermon the 30th minute. Those are the reasons <laughs> why you are not growing. Because we don't like this. Unlike Islam. An imam can issue a death sentence on somebody in Iran. And they were executing can. They won't say, do you know what baby the man was not in his right frame of mind when he was issued? <laughs> but he, yeah, before I finish preaching, you have psychoanalyzed me. Say, Pastor, oh, the Pastor Lano. You take too much of it. All the congregation is holy. Every one of them, the Lord is among them. Is the Lord not among you? <laughs> we, we enjoy this this multiverse of God. You know what I'm talking about, for lack of a better word. This is that's how you see it. That's how I see it. My like pastor Dibble came on Thursday and said, Give. One of the chat, the reason why I'm preaching this message is that I believe that we are overfed. The problem we have is that we are not that sub subject to the things we are taught. We rather, when they say sit, you say, Let me go and investigate. What's so complex about give? What the pastor teaches on Thursday? Give. How many of you have given since Thursday? You went home to psychoanalyze. You know, I was actually talking about when I get my end of the month. Did it? Is that what he said? He said, if you have two tunics, how many of you have something to give? How many of you have given? That's the way, that's where that message will die. It, yes, because you don't do anything. The message will just die there. The board of the year. Yeah, yeah. They take it. Then I will come again three months time. Oh, yes, I see your transformation. Because it will be more probably transformation. Because when you ought to receive that word as the word of God, Sorry. You said, for some of you, say maybe pastor. Only then, God, pastor, I think pastor, people will also. Yeah, God, we can't. Can you come in? It's a little bad body. You see what he said something on Thursday. He said, I've known him for years. He's been in the UK for many years. He said, Pastor has never asked me for one thing before. And that's not a lie. Not only him, but many others. Oh, I think friendship is about. Check out one sense suits him in. That's why you don't have friends. <laughs> Everybody has problems. Even if they are staying in Asso Rock. Are you hearing me? Don't think you are the only one that has body in this world. That the whole world must begin to follow you and be giving to you and be chasing you. You are not the only person that has issues. You are a solution to somebody else too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, let the giving go. Let it go around. Where am I? So they said, all the congregation is holy. Why do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? Moses added, fell on his face. 
and expect to call and to come and say, tomorrow morning, the Lord will show who is is and who is holy and will cause him to come near then. That that one whom he chooses, it will cause to come near. If that was the only... Do you know it's even his, his sister was troubled about it? Numbers 12. Numbers 12. Let's go to Numbers 12. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. Miriam and Aaron are blood brethren of Moses. Because he married, because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married. And this is a problem. He's the lawgiver. And he said, God does not want Israel to intermarry. But he has Ethiopian wife. Hmm? <laughs> For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, as the Lord in this spoke only through Moses. This is the problem. They said they didn't say God is not speaking through Moses. But this we always say the reason why Christianity is a problem is not because he's a way, it's because he is the way. There is something about the human frame that reacts to absoluteness. We we can't stand it. We rather like, well, that's how he sees it. It's, it's good opinion. Let's check other places. You know, those type of things. Has God spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? Please, who has God spoken through here before? Talk to me. A oh, lot is bad. And the Lord had it. Moses was very humble, more than all the men who are on the face of the earth. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of the meeting. So the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Miriam and Aaron, and they both went forward. I'm imagining how he looked. Moses was left behind them and said, Shem was off when? God is separating us from this voice. If God said three of you should come, then God called you. Who is left behind? Is it not Moses? Moses is now father to the tabernacle than Aaron and Miriam. And he said, hear now my words. If there's a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Which means truly I speak to people. Not so with my servant Moses. He's faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly. God wants to discuss Moses. He's discussing with the people who are... He didn't talk to Moses. May God answer you for you. you know, there's a way, I'm different from you. No, God is the one saying it. He said, he sees the form of the Lord. Why there are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord was aroused against them and he departed. As if God just... By the time the cloud departed, Miriam was a leper. Then Moses began to beg God. God said, God, this one, he has to, if, we, if it's her father that spit on her, it will take three or four days for her to be clean. Let, let her, this one she will take. All this restraint. But where my burden is not even this, my burden is, does God only speak through Moses? It is this reaction that is in man when something seems to come only and absolutely from. And we don't only limit it in our relationship with man. Even sometimes it interferes with our relationship with God. Because most of us, God has shown us what he wills. But we are still looking in case there is another way. I have come to tell you this morning, there is no other way than what God has told you. His kingdom is not left to the will of any man. If God says it is more blessed to give than to receive, it is. Stop wasting your time thinking maybe there is a way you can add value to it and change the content. of That, that instruction will never change. Listen to me, church. We are on the platform of making impact. But they've told us that except we lay our life down, we cannot bring forth fruit. So listen, stop trying to save your life. Trying to save your life, you will never have impact. 
There's no other way. You have to accept that wisdom of God as the pathway. It is not only when you have built everything and become a billionaire that you start making money. If you want to wait to that point, you will make no money. Are you following me? God brought you here to initiate the life of meaning and impact. And it starts now. With what you have. With what you have now, there is a person that can remember God through you. Are you following me? You're, 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 you're too silent. Your cry is too silent. Because you are still thinking maybe there is another. There is no other thing. With what you know now, there is somebody whose life can change. Amen. Stop wasting time. When he says go, go. Is that not? Yes, sir. Don't be saying Jesus told one man, follow me. That man said, let me go to my father. Just anybody that puts his hand on the plan and look back. It's not fit. Just obey. If we try to obey the things we have been shown, we'll be surprised how much of transformation can happen in our lives. Don't even try to understand everything. But what has been impressed, do it. Just do it. Are you following me? He said, maybe when God was speaking, God was God had absolute understanding of our story, but not absolute understanding of my own situation. So instruction cannot be our. Your psychoanalysis has paralyzed you. You know, we used to call it analysis, paralysis. You have paralyzed yourself. Said, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Did God not know you are not happy? He said, go. <laughs> That's the pathway to the happiness. Say, I'm not happy, I'm not happy, I'm not happy. God said, go and visit that woman. God, I'm not happy, I'm not happy. In fact, no, nobody in the welfare team has come to greet me. And as you are angry, do you know what God said? God said, go, go and see Mr. Jolalu. I said, God, I'm angry. Did you think God is not intelligent enough to know that you are angry? He is. But sometimes what is telling you is where your reprieve will be battered. But we are too wise. We are too self-absorbed. We always think we know something God does not know. God, if you know what I've been going through, <laughs> are you? Is the living that is going through something? Anybody that gave you life knows what you are going through. You can be having a day now, everybody will look, but God knows you have it. And you'll be looking at everybody and say, ah, that man came to church. And God knows that. His head is pounding. That, he has, and in the midst of that absolute knowledge of God, he can still tell you to do certain things that people will not expect. Are you following me? I am a man under authority. That's the way the, the kingdom of God works when people obey God. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Not just when people learn. Just obey. We've said here, oh, make spiritual disciplines. How many of you have you made? How many of them have you made? Up? Pray, take time, pray through. There are some of us here that in three weeks have not taken one hour to pray. And you now come and say, Oh Lord, change my story. Yeah, bo, 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 so to the end. Man, man, don't waste God's time. Don't stop playing. Are you hearing? Make spiritual disciplines. What's that topic we call the uh, still waters? Run deep. Be deeper on the. How deep are you? If you want to be deep, sometimes you put down your phone. Some of you are craving. Ah, project Hey, I do. Hey. Since you've been watching Hydo. What have you become? I'm not against any of those things, but there's sometimes we, we, we know what to do. The problem is that we still think there is another way to get what we want outside of God's prescription. We are too wise. We think there's another way to break into what we are looking for outside of what he says. But there's no other way. Just the truth. There's no other way. Most especially because he knows what you don't know. He just, you, what do you even know? What, what do you even know? How many of you know what we have five minutes then? And you will thank God soon. I, I, I'll tell you. 
The rebellion of Absalom started in this way. It was in Second Samuel, is it chapter fifteen, from verse one? Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses, fifty men to run before him. Absalom will rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a loss would come to the king for a decision. Absalom will come to him and say, what city are you from? And they will say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Absalom will say, look, your case is good and right. But there is no deputy. The problem we have here is that there is an absolute investment of power. Just one man. There's no deputy to the king to hear you. Oh, oh, that I was made a judge in the land. Absalom will soon know the reason why there is only one person. That may... Do you know that thing that Absalom violated was the reason why Absalom died? Let me show you. I want to run ahead of myself. When Absalom created the rebellion, when David was sending an army to crush Absalom, David said, gave an instruction. Deal gently with the young man. Don't kill him. That was his mercy. Until one man rose up who could wrestle what the king said. His name was called Joab. One man came to Joab and said, I saw Absalom hanging on a tree. Joab said, and you did not kill him. He said, the man said, if I kill him, it's you that will report me to the king. I was in the hearing of, was in our hearing when the king told you, you must deal gently with the man. And Absalom pushed away the man. Until one man rose up that could push away what the king said. That thing Absalom craved for was what took his life. Can you imagine if there would have been no deputy to ever review what the king said it would have been alive when god says something there's a reason why all absolute power is invested in god because many a times that type of power left in the hand of someone else will bring destruction why is it that god did not consult with men to determine what you should be I know when I started speaking, we saw what looks like the tyranny in court of God. But thank God, nobody can review God's word. In the days of Absalom rebellion, the, the, the weaknesses of David's throne was revealed. So much that when the people returned in victory, but Absalom was dead, David was crying. And, and Joab, went to the king and said, King, if you don't go out today and talk to the people, we will leave you. Suddenly, the king now has another voice. And the king was following the man. Joab began to think of himself. By the time you get to kings, conspired with Adonijah, without the knowledge of the king, that Adonijah will be king. He didn't know that God did not invest such power. So Nathan went to David and said, David, I'm your prophet. Are you taking a decision? I'm going to show you something, how intercession comes in. Because everybody gets to that junction where no matter how you love God, you don't understand what he's doing. Nathan said, will you do something and you won't let me know? Because no matter how powerful the prophetic vision of Nathan is, the choice of the successor is David's. And David said, Solomon will reign. And you know the story. But eventually, David called Solomon. He says, you see that man, Joab? Even if he clocks one and two, he must not die normal death. His head, there must be a flow of blood around his head when he's dying. He said, because you know what he did to me. What 
he did to me how he killed Amasa, how he killed Abner. And in the day Solomon was going to execute it, Ab uh, Joab went and El Ab Ab if I do all this, thing, you won't finish this sermon. So just be hearing the story. Some of you are just hearing the story now. Joab went to hold on to the horns of the altar. And you can't kill a man on the horns of God's altar. So the person Solomon sent went back to Solomon and said, He's holding on to the altar. Solomon said, Kill him there. That was when we understood that wherever the word of a king is, God restored that power back to the house of David. Even to the point that they killed him on the end of the altar and God did not count it against David. You don't get it. What was God doing? Absalom wanted to take away that sovereign authority and execute it according to the will of man. God said, no. Do you get what I'm talking about? It's restless for you. But God said, can you follow me? I'm the only one that can wield that power and I know what I'm doing. If Joab, if Absalom had known why such powers was invested in the king, he would have allowed it to stay there. It would have been the mercy of his life. Let God be God. Don't, don't fight it. Let him be God. He's wiser. He's ahead. Are you following me? I want to tell you one truth. You will never find a fault in God's action. Yeah. You might not agree now. You might have reasons to say, but God, what are you thinking? But you will never find a fault. Including your being in Nigeria. Say amen. Yeah. These are hard sayings. Including your being a woman. There are people who have been fighting on their life. Why did God allow me to be a woman? You don't say it, or it's there. Everything is already skewed against me. Life is already normally. All of you are shouting, I keep me out and yesterday. In case you don't even know the facts. <laughs> keep me, I keep me, I keep me. I keep me that was accused for rape. You overlooked rape. <laughs> a lie, property. <laughs> Most of you, you think a man's life is in the, in the abundance of things which he... How many of you agree that a man's life is not the abundance of things which he possesses? God said it clearly. Do you agree? You are too wise. You could be alone. You could be a be You could When you hear one man just bought seven hectares in Bodija, another one in Akalawe, he won... Do you feel you do you feel you are living on the same planet with him? How many of you feel like that? Say, ah. And if God, if the devil wants to torment you, he makes sure the man is your is, was your mate in the university. Ah. Oh God. <laughs> in this same country, ah. you go home, your wife will put food in front of you. You just I'm not eating. You can't explain. Who told you your life has no meaning? Yes. Who told you? God told man in the garden, who told you you were naked? It is the consciousness that is bringing your crisis. They were always naked. But they were never ashamed. It was a consciousness the enemy brought that was their trouble. Who told you your life is not making advance? Who, who even told you? you? You that seven people have had reasons to thank God for this year. There are some of the people that, that are buying people are causing them every day. Alone. One is one. One is one. You know those type of things. Nobody has said it about you. But you don't believe. Even as I'm preaching in church, is the man's life, is that the abundance of Jesus? <laughs> That's how they play. <laughs> it's good to travel, see the world. But I've told myself, God has made the whole lot of one blood. He has determined the boundary of the habitation. Nobody is saved in America without the blood of Jesus. Your ministry is no more 
effective because you saved the white man. It all those you have only used social issues to trouble your mind, not spiritual issues. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the will of God. It's social. You this, you will go around the world. You will see if you want to go and see a living volcano, go and see it. But that does not have any value. If it does not speak for God's kingdom, that's why some people. I can Mongo Park say discover river Niger. That's where some people were born. What you are calling to this destination is some people's hometown. They don't even know it exists. You will go there and say, how oh, you take picture. A month Bogota. You are so poor. You know, I don't you know. Some of you immediately you have a passport, now you begin to feel like you're a better person. So, passport, you think about your shell. I lady business. Get your passport. I'm not against getting passport. But see, stop attaching your sense of value to some of these things. I'm telling you the truth. That's why I don't do car dedications in faith rest. Get angry to tomorrow. If you bring a new car and when I look at your workspace where you should be working and I didn't see that well, I'd be don't come get a new car. You won't drive new car to hell. I celebrate with them that celebrate the same way I mourn with them that mourn. There's nothing. Don't think. Uh, this. You're not in one. You're not in advance. Suddenly now, if you now look at what somebody brings as a car, this person cannot be my subgroup leader. Cannot be my subgroup leader because, because you see. <laughs> and it comes with an occad. He said, No, no, this, this person cannot be my sub group leader because you know, see, when, when you work with the world, they produce results. The, the, the result, and which that's why I hear about everybody shouting result. Which result? Uh, which one? The result is the fruit of the spirit. Honing the world, and the world does not hone you. The world not having a grip over you is a stronger battle than you honing the world. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not against increase. I know what it means to start small and to grow big, and God has helped me in my own measure. But listen to me. How many of you here can travel abroad without putting on Facebook? Magda. Right, Ada. No, 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 Manchester, Old Trafford. Old Trafford. If they would defeat your team there, they would defeat them. Even in your presence. That's it. But it's good. It's good. It's a tourist expression. Just enjoy. Some of you need to travel. You are too local. But you are still spiritual. Do you get what I'm saying? You are still God's man. You are just local. You get what I'm saying? But <laughs> because if God transfers the kingdom to our hands, this is the way we'll be playing with the kingdom. This is how we'll be interpreting kingdom. We'll be interpreting kingdom according to Old Trafford, uh, the Newcastle. Uh, I don't even know those places. According to Dubai, uh, this is me at the tallest building in the world. The kingdom is working. Kingdom. The kingdom works where you go to one abad too. Is the king. Take the picture. You have a right to show it, but show us where you go. <laughs> to accumulation, go by the, the kingdom is working. The two must be side by side. That's why I know you have operating kingdom. But if you are not doing that, I know you are just doing social, social. You get what I'm saying? Abound, abase, do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens you, go to the village, enjoy the cities, go to the mountains, come to the valleys, see God's value in every man. And then you have seen the kingdom of God. That's the kingdom. Because most of us here, that's why the God who is speaking to Nigerians is always speaking to them about Canada, about UK and America. There are 194 countries in the world. 
go into the world laos nicaragua if truly mission is what is driving you it's not mission it's colonialism they don't like this message let me just one man who said they don't like this message yet let me go to this place <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let, let me tie up. Huh? So much. Okay, that's all right. In, in Second Kings chapter 5, I saw a, con- a challenge that can happen to us when you are dealing with a sovereign that you have problem with their decision because occasionally even as God's man there are times God hurts and you can't just find the wisdom in it Naaman came to Elisha and Elisha told him go dip yourself in the Jordan seven times and you will come clean. And the man was hungry. And the Bible says he went away. And listen, when a man, a man is going away, what will happen to his servants that followed him? Hmm? But they were thinking, they had a problem with the decision of Naaman. But they have no power to command Naaman. So his servants came there and spoke to him and said, My father. He said, Let me tell you something. Submitting absolutely to the will of God is not that easy. Because his frequencies are different from yours. How he thinks is different from how you think. You, there's a way some of these things feel closer to you. But yet you believe by faith that he knows what he's doing. So when you have to talk to God, when God is taking a decision and you feel maybe it's not checking some other side, something that is required in it is called humility. This man went to his father and said, My father, you know, if this prophet had told you to do something great, you would have done it. I know you. All he said is that they are trying to move him without commanding him. Have you ever tried to move God before? Every person gets to a point where you want God. God, if you do this thing, I will have capacity to be able to do this thing. Have you ever spoken to God like that before? But you cannot say, God! Where is my billion? You don't have that power. So they said, and they went and washed. I will show you. There are three servants I want to show you in this story. That's the first servant. They went and washed. And the man came back home. And he came to Elisha. He said, now I know there is no God on the earth except the God of Israel. Take a gift from us. And the man said, and Elisha said, I will not take a gift. And he said, okay, so please, just give us the sand of Israel. He said, but there is one problem, sir. My master used to go to the house of his God every year. And high Naaman must be the one that he leans his hand on. When, he, when I bow in the temple of Rimo, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Now I'm following a man going to a place I don't have persuasion for. Are you saying again? And God told Naaman, no problem because I know to move sovereigns is not easy but there was another servant he has who said see my master look look at this my master I speared Nema the Syrian I will run after him Elijah will need it. I would seize my opportunity. 
These are the three types of servants. The ones who spoke with counsel. Because when you are about to move, somebody you have no right to his decision. Are you following me? The servants had no right to the decision of Naaman. Naaman had no right to the decision of the king of Syria. Gehazi had no right to the decision of Elisha. Are you following me? So by the time he took all the gold from Naaman, he came back. Elisha said, where have you been? He, for you to know that, he could not even hold up to it. He said, I've gone nowhere. All his braggado could not stand before scrutiny. So then to you, I saw the man when he was turning back to give you something. Is this the time? Did you hear Gazi speak one word? How do I move with sovereign? Because of cash, especially God. Because sometimes God does as if he's not concerned about what is happening in our individual lives. Have you ever come to church before? You are so troubled, everything is in your mind, and when pastor is preaching, it has nothing to do with what you are going to. You know, God has a kingdom. Killer come well, look kingdom. You are looking for to mind that word. If I can just say this month, this month, I'm feeling it. That's how some preachers stop preaching the Bible. Because they know that your need is your God. So they to settle down and say, This month. But turn around. How do you move? It, it, it brought me to Abraham. Genesis 18, 16 to 33. God was going to Sodom after eating in Abraham's house. And he said, Shall I do a thing? Without telling my friend Abraham, since he's going to train his children. And God said, I'm going to Sodom. I'm, I'm going to see whether the judgment that I've, I've decided has been executed on it. Their cry has reached heaven. What did Abraham do? And Abraham came there. Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Continue. Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you also destroy the place and spare it? And not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? it be from you to do such a thing to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked fight be from you you sh sh shall not the judge of the heart say god you have a reputation at stake here it's not about me this is intercession you are trying to move the hand of god who has who executes all things according to the counsel god you know you are the judge of the heart What did God say? Yes, now. Who is there? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, I will spare it. Spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered, Indeed, now I who am but dust and ashes, I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. This is, if he said, I will wipe out the 50 with them, he has the right. But if he gives you the chance, how do you handle it? You handle it not thinking you are something that you are not. Always conscious of the limitation of your knowledge. But taking the advantage of the privilege. How do you balance this too? He said, I'm dust. Suppose there are five less than 50 righteous. Will you destroy? He said, if I have 45, I will not destroy and he spoke to him yet again. He said, suppose there should be 40 there. I said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. And he said, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak. The abandoned king sorrow, sir. How many of you know God has, God's thoughts are already well thought out? So if he gives you the right to pray, you pray with every sense of humility. If you give me right to speak, suppose there are 30 if there, he said, I will not do it if I find 30. And he said, indeed, now I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found and he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. 
And he said, Let not my Lord be angry. I will speak once more. The last time. There was no, even all the, all the chance God was giving Abraham. He did not give Abraham a false sense of himself. Every time God answered him, he came with more humility before God. He didn't come with, we are the ones that determine the destiny of nation. I will speak but one more. Suppose 10 be found there and he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. The Lord went his way. This is how to talk to a God. In fact, his intercession fell short. In his wildest imagination, he stopped at 10. God did not find 10. The Bible says the Lord delivered Noah, the Lord, when he remembered Abraham. Though the intercession of Abraham did not meet up, but God still made me. That's why you need to thank God that our absolute power is in his hand. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Because he's the one that can have that level of power to destroy a whole city and still save a man and pull out a man in the midst of the destruction of a region. God is so powerful, but you are so important as a person that he knows you by name. You don't get what I'm saying. That he speaks over nations. He speaks over generations by one or trans. Yes, he speaks to individuals in the midst of them. Can I do that? Are you getting this point? I'm destroying Sodom. But they pulled. The angels waited until Lot. Do you still have anything here? Do you still have anything here? And he came with himself and his two daughters filled with Sodom's mindset. Because only, I don't know what can occupy the mind of a woman. That would say, if we don't have husband, let's sleep with our father. But God still pulled them out. For we do not know what we should pray. Or how we should pray. Every time you are talking about God's agenda, you, we have no knowledge. We are clueless of how exactly it should play out. But the Holy Spirit helped our infirmities. He doesn't leave us to that point and say, well, since you don't know, I will just leave you there. He helps. He helps. And the Bible says, when you search the, your heart, you know the mind of the spirit because the spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Do you get what I'm saying? That's how you come in connection with that will. It even takes God's help for you to hit target of his will. We have nothing in ourselves that can find it out. Show me your will. There's nothing. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not come into the mind of man. Those are the faculties of our searching. But they are not sufficient to capture God's will. Are you getting me? That's why the kings of this world crucified the Lord of glory. Those were the faculties they relied on. That's why the Bible said the natural man cannot receive the stains of this world. But you have not received the spirit of this world. The reason why you can walk in the will of God is because there is a spirit that has been given to you that is not of this. There is nothing earthly that can come in contact with God's will. It does not have the faculty. It doesn't have the, the capacity. Are you following me? <laughs> to, to find out God's will. But this is why you are in Christ. Thine is the kingdom, Lord. Too many things. One day they told Jesus, said, Lord, is it time? Acts 1 verse 6 to 8. Is it time for you to restore the kingdom to Israel? Do you know what he said to them? He said, it's not for you to know. Acts 1, 6 and 7. Where are you? Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? What did he say? Verse 7. It is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. There are too many things. 
You know 2023, you're counting chronologically. Do you know what it means in God's plan? How many of you know whether we are at 11.39 p.m. in God's plan? Thank you for this birthday, Lord. This birthday, Lord. This birthday, Lord. It is not for you to know. If you really know how much we don't know, it will be easy for us to submit when he speaks. The reason why it's very hard for people to submit when God speaks and gives instruction is because they think they know. Are you following? It's not for you to know. The Bible even said in the book of Matthew, for that day and that hour, no man knows. There are two. When you are talking about the agenda of God, no man, when is Jesus come? Does it even look like he's coming? Okay, hope. Even the atmosphere is telling you, oh, don't, don't waste your time. Don't, don't, don't. What do they call it? Don't kill. Um, don't, like, don't, don't kill yourself. Oh, I mean, express. There's nothing that looks like Jayo. Yeah, you know that? That one looks more like it's closer than kingdom. Because we don't know. They were marrying. They were giving back. They were giving their children. See, the waters of Noah came. There was nothing in the atmosphere that spoke of a flood. They were marrying. They were giving back. They were giving their daughters until no Lot went out of Sodom. Nothing. Sodom had not. The, the Bible said when Lot told them to get out, it was like he was a comedian. Read it in Genesis. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Because there is nothing in the human faculty that can get discern the will of God. But you have received the Holy Spirit. So when that spirit says, Son, do this, I, I hope you'll be wise enough to do it. Second, in first Samuel 15, let me let me let me give this as a final witness. I, I don't know, I've jumped many, I've jumped so many things. One day God told Saul, I remember what the Amalekites have done. I want you to go wipe them out. Now, the problem of Saul is that you think the Amalekite problem started in your time. It predicts you. Go utterly destroy. Now, this is a problem. When Saul got there, he destroyed. But he saw some things. He said, these ones will be good for sacrifice. I want to bring you to a knowledge that your impute has no place in divine will. Divine will is communicated and accepted by obedience. That's what he told Saul in that story. That obedience is better than sacrifice. The battle Saul lost was the easiest battle against the Philistines, against the Amalekites. I'll show you three battles of the Amalekites. The first battle of the Amalekites was described in this way. In Deuteronomy 25, 17 to 19. This was the first battle of the Amalekites. Remember the, what Amalek did to you on the way when they were coming out of Egypt. He met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks. And all the stragglers who were at your rear, when they were tired and they did not fear God. The Amalekites had the first chance to fight Israel and attack the weary ones behind. Israel had almost no response. The second battle against the Amalekites was in Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. It was where Moses went to the mountain and lifted the rod and when his hand goes up israel wins and when his hands come low israel loses that was the advance where israel was not confronted but in the days of saul god gave him absolute right to wipe away if there was anybody that was best positioned in the battle against amalek in their history it was Saul. but do you know what killed him Injected human wisdom. So when we are coming, the people said we should not destroy some of these things. Uh, they will be good for sacrifice. And so, and, 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 and 
And Samuel said something. He said, let me tell you. When you are small in your eyes, the problem is, a time comes when you are not small again. You have seen too much. So when you see, you begin to think, maybe God is not seeing as much as he should see. Shame on my By the time we sacrifice, Eli and all of them will just be thanking. Samuel will be thanking God. In fact, the Bible said when Samuel came, Saul went to Samuel and said, I have fulfilled the mission God sent me. He was so persuaded. And that one said, The Lord sent you on a mission to wipe. Totally destroy. You brought this. He said, but I'm bringing it for sacrifice. He said, God. He said, rebellion is as witchcraft. The battle God wanted to end was prolonged by Saul. It's amazing. When you get to the book of Esther, that Mordecai was of the generation of Kish, which was the generation of Saul. And Aman was an Agagite, the generation of King Agag, whom Saul speared. When you intercept God's plan with your knowledge, you further a battle that you had. Who here is humble enough to say, if you tell me, sit. I'll sit. Let me tie up. It's, 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 okay. it's not easy. You know, as I was coming out of, from the office this morning, one scripture that came to me, I mean, another day I pray God will give us understanding. Was the, it's, it's Luke 15, the anger of the brother of the prodigal son. The Bible says when he came back home and he met the party, he went out. And why was he angry? He said the statement when his father went to meet him. If you can get that. Yeah, give me the next verse. But he was angry with not going. Therefore his father went out and pleaded with him. And he answered, Lo, this many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. Yet you have never, you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry means don't determine the agenda. Just give it to me. Let me and my friends. I've always operated with commandment do you get it you tell me to do something i do it but give me a young go to make that's the problem we want to get to a point where we just feel like god leave certain things to my discretion unfortunately the kingdom is not left to the will of God. Anybody that cannot operate by obedience can't walk the will of God. It will not be left. The son that pleased the father was always instructed. Did you notice? Is it? And there were times he felt, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just. I mean, I was just passing through Russia, I just saw one game. Now, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother, my mother, just wanted to go. Let, let me just greet. Have you ever wanted to go on a harmless visit to somebody and God said no? Just harmless visit. God says it's not harmless. That's kingdom life. Take your money. This is what I want to use. You say, God, as you're about to go on a vacation, you have package of the money somebody comes to the church if you have two tunics <laughs> some of you as pastor the was preaching on thursday you carried cotton wool put it in your head oh no matter try 
Somebody said many years ago, he said, anytime he wants to go and do something, as packet the money, the pastor would just come and say, give your Isaac. Give your Isaac. Give your Isaac. Ah. He said, one day, he said, you to give your Ishmael. You know, are you, what, what you want to describe by this game? Whom your soul love it. How many of you know you know what you love? Everybody have their things that give your eyes. So sometimes when the pastor is just going towards give you Isaac, you just carry cutting wool. I have given. I want to make Mary. Thank God for Mary, but thank God much more for purpose. And purpose is undergirded by commandments. It will lead you. In the way you ought to go. But I hope you will be willing when he says, Go. He will go. When he says, Come. Jesus said, Bring forth fruit. Have you accepted that that's the way? Let's stop analyzing what he said. Let's do what he says. Go be a witness. Please be restless as a Christian if you have never been a witness to somebody. You are not obeying his voice. Ah, I wanted to say something. Let me show you how human opinion can be good but can cut you out of God. In John, John, John 18 verse 36, look at this word. Jesus was standing before Pilate. I'm rounding up with this. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servant would what? Fight. So that I would not be delivered to Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Go back to verse 10 and 11 of that chapter. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest here and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword in the sheet. Shall I not drink of the cup which my father has given me? If my kingdom was of the world, my servants would have fought. So when Peter was fighting here, he was fighting thinking he was serving God. Do you know what he was doing? He had disconnected from the kingdom. Because the kingdom at that point is not resisting the arrest. So it was a good intention, but it was an intention that would snatch him out of God's kingdom. Are you following me? Because if he was he was just taking up an earthly operation of the kingdom, which is if my kingdom was of this world, my servants will fight. How then can you do the will of God if you don't listen to him? As important, as impressive as fighting for your Lord is, it was almost detaching Peter from the kingdom. Did you get what I just said there? You know, that was the second time I was happening to Peter. It had happened to him before. When he said, Master, you cannot die. Matthew, Matthew 16. Lord, you cannot die. And Peter, and Jesus said to him, Get thee behind me, Peter. You know only the things of man. You don't know the things of God. How many of us know we need help? Now, if you know you need help, that's when you will become dependent. So when that man says, sit, there will be times there will be reactions in your soul. You need to pass on soil. i you. Can you imagine Peter should have fought that day and they killed him? And the disciples will carry him. Oh, Mataya. Mataya. Fought for the kingdom. And heaven is looking. You, you pour away the cup that you should drink. So how do I know? It's by hearing and obeying. And how do I hear and obey? It's because I trust. That God has absolute power. I don't play an imp- a place in impute. I don't even play, 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 play any role in review. I can play a role in intercession. Mm, 
with wisdom and what? Humility. But what is required ultimately from me is what? Obedience. That's a good summary. You don't play a role in impute. God does not have cancer. He has been doing it before you are born. Amalek's battle was not Saul's battle. God has said it in Exodus 17. I will fight Amalek from generation to generation. It was God's battle. You just came in. It was not your battle. God's intention, God's will span generations before you are born. If Christ tarries, it will span generations after you are you have gone. Sometimes you say, God, why did all this happen? He knows what he's doing. I believe in him. That I will not be afraid if he's my judge, if he's my king, if he's my lawgiver. How many of you trust God that much? There is something called the Supreme Court. And I, in Nigeria and all over the world. And there is this famous quote. The Supreme Court is not infallible because tell me the Supreme Court is not infallible because it's final it's final because it's infallible Supreme Court is not infallible because it's final but it's, it's final let, let me let, let me I think I wrote it somewhere So it was quoted by one man called Robert Jackson. He said, we are final not because we are infallible. Rather, we are infallible because we are final. Fight, fight, fight. There's somebody did not win the election. The way the Supreme Court says, you can be, because if there's no finality, there will not be end of dispute. How many of you remember that message? But do you know something about what Jesus' story? It's not that we are accepted. The Supreme Court decision sometimes has to be accepted. Not because it's infallible. In fact, many a times, like they gave the Lawan Sine ticket. We know all the ones they do in Nigeria, but what can we do? But see, Jesus' own story is not what can we do. Is that when you x-ray what it does, you can't find fault in it. Jesus is finer because it's infallible. It's not what we accept. It's what we trust. Because we know him. That he has absolute capacity to be king, to be judge, and to be a lawgiver at the same time. Do you understand? I pray that in your journey you will discover that God is infallible. Stand to your feet. Acts 1 verse 1 to 3. From my account I made, O Theophilus of all Jesus began to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Infallible proofs means it's not, there is no error. The proofs of Jesus being alive is without error. The proof that God loves you. So when God takes a decision, don't think God took a decision and he has to regret it because I didn't know. The reason why God does not need cancer loss is because it's all knowing. Even sovereigns that we call king, they have to surround them with a lot of counsel because if they make a wrong decision, we are bound by it. So, how to make up for that thing is what? It's the court of counselors. But God has no counsel. Nobody directs his spirit. Because it's all knowing. I want you to go this morning telling him, I know you are all knowing. You are all powerful. And that you can do all you want to do. I want us to express that confidence in him this morning. That we find no error in his decision. We find no error in his, him telling us to sit. We find no error in him telling us to rise. 
We find no error in him telling us to forgive because sometimes he will tell you, overlook that, and you say, Lord, but you don't understand. Thine is the kingdom. The kingdom is invested in no other person than him. He is the king. He is the Lord. He is the judge. He is the lawgiver. We find no error in it. Look into your own life. If there is a place where you have been fighting God this morning, I want you to just issue a statement of submission. Statement of submission this morning. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. It's for you. It's through you. And it's by you. It's by you. Who's talking to God this morning? When last did you sit when he said sit? When last did you rise when he said rise? When last did you give when he said give? When last did you withhold when he said withhold? When last did you, when last were you delivered from the grip of your emotions and control just to honor him? When last did you preach? Because he said, he said, you must bear fruit. That's what he said. Father, Lord, help us this morning to submit to you. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You are the initiator. You are the power at work. You are the one that receives the glory. You are the initiator. You are the power at work. Wherever you are in the flocks, wherever you are in the scheme of things, he is there. Thine is the kingdom, Father. Where are you in the journey? Is he that by him? Or for him or through him but he is there at every junction cry to the Lord cry to the Lord this morning everybody sometimes we've made him too small he said sit you rose up he said no 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 Lord you don't know what I'm going through haha <laughs> He's all-knowing. Man, God, is all-knowing. He sees. He sees what you don't even see. If he's pulling you up, if he says it's time to pray, he sees something you are not yet seeing. Satan should not take you unawares. You are dealing with an all-knowing God. But the problem is that you have not always responded to the promptings of God. You have not always responded to the promptings of God. You've always been behind him. You've always had your own ideas. We have made you too small in our eyes. Oh Lord. Forgive us. You are unable to help me. That's true. Oh, able to help me. But now, oh Lord. serious have you always given God the right estimation 
have you always given God the right estimation? Say, God, God, there's nothing you're going through that is too hard for God to change. Nothing. But maybe our ideas have even hindered us. Maybe we can't sit when He tells us to sit. Maybe we can't even trust when He tells us to just calm down. Or maybe we don't even race when He tells us to double the pace. We must repent from our perceptions. We must repent of our perceptions so that we can come to the same frequency with Jesus this morning. If he wants to change you from where you are to where he wants you to be, he can do it within a short time. We be may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. But in his presence, his fullness of joy, and his right hand of pleasures forevermore, you will show me the path of life. The path of life is shown to people. You don't discover it by yourself. He will show me. He will show me. He will show me. Where am I been fighting like in the dark? Where have I been fighting like I'm fighting the here? Show me the path of life. Somebody pray to God this morning. I said I will fight my way. I said I will hide you my way. But where have you gotten to now? You said you will do this. Where have you gotten to now? What have you done with it? You said I will change my husband. How much have you changed now? You said I will change my wife. How much have you changed now? You have no power. of David than what the servants of Nabal had. The servants of Nabal saw David and his men as walls and structures of defense to them in the wilderness. Nabal saw David as one man just loafing around looking for free food. But the challenge, when they went to Abigail, they said, you know, our master is such a scoundrel and no man can speak to him. How can I know so much? But I cannot talk. 
you don't understand how treasured the servants of neighbor they saw, of neighbor they saw how neighbor was speaking to david's man they were saying these are not the men these are not the men there are times in our life where our entire inner man is touched with ideas we have proven it we've we've gone through it over and over again and and it's as if it's making no meaning to god but thank God our God can be spoken to. So how, how do we speak to him? Likewise, the spirit also help our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know how we should pray. We don't even know how we should pray. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. Now he who searches the heart, know the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When you get to those points, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. When your experience and your, your, what you're going through cannot be denied and you want to find a place of intersect between it and what and the will of god you need the help of the spirit to navigate it you can't talk irrationally you can't talk rashly god is in heaven you are on earth let your words be few and yet you are full of issues what do you do the holy spirit helps you are you following me this morning so this morning i want you to pray and say father i receive your help to align my life into the plan of god for my life i receive the help of the holy spirit everybody receive the help of the holy spirit concerning where you are and concerning where you are going concerning where you are concerning god's thoughts for you i receive help if you can pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost let help come from heaven let help come let the lord help you to search your heart and to know the mind of the spirit the spirit makes intercession i do not rely on my understanding lord but i rely on the help of the holy spirit spirit of god lead me spirit of god lord quicken me let me wake up at the right time let me be strengthened with all might in the inner man by the holy spirit let me pursue without fainting let me run without being weary in the name of you them that wait upon the lord they renew their strength thank you lord help me lord i don't know how many days remain i don't even know the hour and the time i am in god's plan but i pray in the name of you you will help me to be instant in season and out of season to walk according to the will of god for my life let no opportunity that you are presented to me be, be missing let me not miss any opportunity let me not defy till tomorrow what must happen today let me not press today what must happen tomorrow help me to understand help me to comprehend by the spirit send forth the spirit of the lord upon me anoint me lord let the anointing of the lord come when the spirit of the lord can come it will lead you to all truth lord i walk in all truth of times and seasons of the knowledge of god of the plans of god for my life for my time for my family for my nation help oh god in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ lord we thank you for lord we know that all things work together for good for those who love god and those who are called according to his purpose you are working in me you are working in me so this morning relinquish that country said yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory say to him say father i give you the, the kingdom is yours let the power for it work in my life and let the glory for it go back to you the kingdom is yours let the power for it be at work in my life let the glory of it go back to the name of the lord be glorified lord be glorified lord be glorified lord i am here by your power i go out by your power i build by your power i speak by your power plant churches by your power bring men to salvation by your power i execute divine agenda by your power i walk by your power yours is the kingdom yours 
Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Yours is the glory. Yours is the glory. Yours is the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. We set your people in motion today that all they are, they will be by the grace of God. They will have nothing. There's no cause of flesh to glory. The glory is yours because the power is yours. Because the kingdom is yours. And you have not left it to any man. Lord, that seed you planted in us when we confess you. Take it again. Drive it until it takes us to what glorifies you. Don't leave it out. Don't let it die out. Don't leave it to the will of men. Don't leave it to the will of the flesh. Drive it, Lord, until your intention is done. Drive it in every soul, in every heart, in every spirit here this morning. In the name of Jesus, drive it. Executed by your power. Bring it for your glory. Thine is the kingdom. In Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to go home having rest. God is our lawgiver, is our king and is our judge, but the most important thing is, is our loving father. So every decision he takes does not make him a tyrant, it makes him an helper. Hallelujah.